shocking requirements to work at Disneyland. Hey everyone, it's Alexa. Before we get into today's video, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification for all of our upcoming videos. Disneyland officially opened its doors on the 17th of July, 1955, and as of December 2017, had seen 708 million visitors pass through. There are roughly 23,000 employees working at Disneyland California and thousands more at their other 11 theme parks worldwide. It takes a really dedicated person to work there, and we'll have a look at some of the shocking requirements that you need to even be employed. Tats, not cool. There are so many websites giving you advice on how to get your dream job at a Disney resort, but not many of them tell you to not have any tattoos. If you're keen to work at Disney, remember to ensure that your tattoos are covered up, even if they're Disney-inspired. Be our guest. When you work at Disney, you're not just doing the job, you're creating magic and it's showtime all day long. Visitors to Disney are never referred to as such, but are called guests. You don't wear a uniform, you wear a costume. You don't have a job title, you play a role, and you're never at work, but either off stage or on stage. You can never tell people that you play Donald Duck, but need to rather say that you're pals with Donald Duck. Stay in character. This is probably one of the most important rules that any employee at Disney needs to remember, and that is to stay in character all the time. As a staff member of Disney, you may not refer to anything other than Disney. So speaking about the latest iPhone is strictly off limits. When that costume is on, all that exists is that character and nothing else. Disney till the end. We mentioned in the previous post that you have to stay in character, but I'm sure it never crossed your mind that those characters have to remain that way, even if they're injured or worse, dying. A former employee shared the story of when he accepted a job as Water Goofy on a Disney cruise. Before commencing employment, he had to sign a waiver saying that should he drown or something should happen to him on the water, he would have to remain in character until he was out of view from the public. Not a great image for a kid to remember seeing Goofy drown or have a heart attack. Keeping trim. It may seem obvious when you work for any organization that your nails should be clean and neat, but as an employee of Disneyland, they must be short too. There are measurements in place that they must abide by. Disney princesses have a little more leeway and can have their nails a quarter of an inch past the fingertip. And just in case you were wondering, no, nail polish is certainly not allowed. A hairy issue. Physical appearance is very important to Disneyland, and let's be honest, have you ever seen a Disney princess look anything less than perfect? Women can only sport a classic style with a natural looking color. Highlights are allowed as long as they are subtle and cover the entire head, as per their career website. The hair on a man's head cannot cover his ears or touch his collar. They can have a bit of facial hair, but it must always look neat and never be longer than a quarter of an inch. Shine bright, but not too brightly. Jewelry is allowed, but it has to be low key. Women can have a ring on each hand and one earring in each ear. That's it. Men can have a ring on each hand too, but no earrings. Sorry guys, if you do happen to have other piercings, they need to be removed before working your shift. All the better to see you with. It would be a little far-fetched if Disney banned eyewear, but have you ever seen an employee wearing glasses? Perhaps the prerequisite is that they must wear contact lenses to fulfill the role. It's not exactly clear. What is clear is that if eyewear is doable, then no logos may be obvious and they have to be respectable looking. So leave your Elton John and John Lennon frames at home. Underneath it all. As a cast member, you have to be very careful with what you're wearing underneath your costume. If anything is visible beneath your wardrobe, it's an absolute no-no. Costumed cast members are allowed to wear a solid white crew neck underneath their costumes as long long as it has a traditional neckline. It's different if you're a non-costumed staff member. Then you can wear any solid colored undershirt as long as it matches the outfit you're wearing. At one stage, cast members had to wear underwear supplied by Disney. Members were said to have gotten licensed, scabies, and the union had to step in to ensure they could wear their own personal undergarments. A tall order. If you're wanting to be part of the Disney crew, you not only have to adhere to all the rules and regulations we've already mentioned, but you need to be a certain height. There is a three to four inch margin that women need to meet before they're even considered for hiring. Princesses have to be five foot four inches and five foot five eight, but if you're shorter, you could apply for the role of Tinkerbell, Alice in Wonderland, or Wendy in Peter Pan, where the minimum requirement is for 11. If you're really short, there is still the option of applying for one of the seven dwarves, as no height requirements are mentioned online. 
you're fired. If you thought it was difficult to get a job at Disneyland, you're right. There are thousands of people applying for jobs every single month. However, getting fired is on the other end of the scale. One Redditor revealed their friend who had worked in the park was fired for eating a piece of popcorn that had fallen on her shirt. Another employee was fired when she broke her ankle and couldn't carry on with her princess duties. No idea. If you're working your shift and someone comes to you with a question that you truly have no idea how to answer, you can never, ever, ever say, I don't know. Disney truly does not expect their employees to know the answer to every single question that will be fired at them. But then they need to make a call to a Disney operator and find out the answer right away. Smile and wave. It's not something you may have considered before, but if you're working at Disneyland as a character, this is what you'd need to go through. Besides rigorous training and wearing a massive costume in sweltering temperatures, every character must be the same. So if you are Minnie Mouse, your mannerisms must match hers to a T. And then there will be other Minnie Mouses and they all have to be the same right down to the autograph. Remember, there is only one Minnie Mouse, so she has to be uniform throughout, even down to the way the pen is held in her hand. Hand. Best you start practicing those signatures now. Be prepared for anything. Former employees of Disneyland have spoken of being attacked rather frequently. If you've ever made a trip to a Disney theme park, you can understand that it can be hot and exhausting and overwhelming for kids and adults. One Disney cast member retells the story of how a Pluto was unceremoniously pushed into a fountain and what a mission it was to get that suit dry thereafter. Two is the magic number. If you're working at Disneyland and someone is asking you for directions, never ever point with one finger. In some cultures, it's considered rude to gesture with just the one finger, so always point using two. Keep it tidy. If you're a cast member at Disneyland, understand that you'll not just be playing your role to perfection, but you'll also be tidying up after yourself. Nobody is exempt from picking up trash at Disneyland, so whether you're Rapunzel from Tangled or your Daisy Duck, if there's rubbish lying around, you're picking it up and putting it in the trash can. No bending the rules. Having just said that cast members must pick up trash, there's a certain way that they have to do it. They can't just bend down to pick it up, but must use a trash scooper to retrieve it and then throw it in the trash can. Secret code. In order to keep the magic alive in the Magic Kingdom, staff members have secret code words to alert others to situations that may crop up. For example, if a guest had to vomit, they would call it in as code V. There's nothing that ruins the magic more than the word vomit. No photos. Imagine getting your dream job at Disneyland and you're not allowed to take photos. Well, that's a reality for the cast at Disneyland. No photographs can be taken backstage. An image of Mickey Mouse sans his head is enough to give kids nightmares for the rest of their lives. Socially unacceptable. So if you thought no photographs was bad, it gets worse. Although cast members don't have to give up social media altogether, they are never allowed to post about their jobs. They may not reveal what characters they are either, so the magic continues. A little respect. As difficult as this one may seem, as an employee, you can never make a guest feel stupid. So if someone asks you what time the 3 o'clock p.m. parade begins, you must smile and be polite and tell them that it indeed starts at 3 o'clock p.m. Feel free to think whatever you want to, though. There's no limitation to that. Everyone's an equal. Celebrities are just like you and I, and they love Disneyland, but don't think you can treat them any differently to anybody else. They must also wait in line for photographs and autographs, and more importantly, you can never ask them for a photograph. That is grounds for instant dismissal. What's in a name? You would think not much, but at Disneyland, which we mentioned hires 23,000 staff members, it's a big deal. You can imagine that of those 23,000 people, many of them play the role of cast members, and there would, of course, be a number of them with the same name. Apparently, this is not okay. In there is a rule in place that says cast members can't share a name. Only one person can keep their original name. I guess the first person hired, right? And then the others would need to change their name. It seems a bit odd, but perhaps it's to ensure there's no confusion, especially since the characters are not exactly going to be wearing name badges. Chewed out. If you work at Disneyland, ensure you kick your chewing gum habit pronto. Chewing gum is banned when you're working in the Magic Kingdom. You've heard all the crazy rules and regulations that cast members must abide by to work at Disneyland, and knowing all of these, would you still want to work there? Better yet, has anyone watching this worked at Disneyland? Share your thoughts or experiences with us in the comments below. One, a little magic. 
The rules and regulations are hectic, but that's not to say the cast and crew don't get to relax and have some fun, too. Disney cast members get a lesson about the history of Disney and are then welcomed to their new home by Mickey himself. Cast members get unlimited free access to the parks, pizza nights, and team building days. They can test new rides and often get a party thrown for them in their honor. When their days are over at Disney, they have a graduation ceremony and receive a certificate and a mortarboard with its own set of Mickey's ears. Of course. <laughs>